Welcome everyone to what promises to be an invigorating discussion on Jean-Luc Godard's Breathless. Let's start with a brief touch on the significance of Breathless in film history. Amelia, your thoughts? It is a true pleasure to be here, Hal. Godard's Breathless is more than a film. It's a cultural landmark that epitomized the French New Wave. It broke cinema's conventions and presented a new language of storytelling that resonates even today. It was Godard's boldness that changed everything. Absolutely, Amelia. It was groundbreaking, no doubt. I've always found it fascinating how Godard flirted with narrative structure. Yet despite its rebellious style, it's the raw honesty in Breathless that captivates audiences as much now as it did back then. Honesty, sure, but let's not forget the complexity of its characters, especially Patricia. Godard shaped her role in a way that pushed boundaries, especially for that era. Speaking of boundaries, the technical side of Breathless is just as riveting. Godard's techniques mirrored technological shifts of the time, which echoes the kind of seismic changes we see today in the digital world. And those shifts are innately tied to the historical context. Breathless was not only a cinematic revolution, it was a reflection of Bohemian Paris and the youth's tiredness of the old guard. Each of you brings an essential shade to our discussion. It's worth mentioning the rules for our audience. While it's a passionate roundtable, we aim for respect and a healthy exchange of ideas. Now, let's hear your personal reflections on your relationship with Breathless. Mick? For me, Breathless is a historian's delight. It captures the ethos of a generation, and Godard paints this portrait of rebellion and cultural upheaval that speaks volumes beyond the screen. Godard's work often feels like a cinematic poem, one that captures the different facets of societal norms. Breathless is both a love letter and a critique of culture, and as a curator, that duality is absolutely fascinating. From a technological standpoint, I'm drawn to the rawness of Breathless, how it feels both immediate and timeless, a result of exceptional craft working with technology. As someone who lives through cultural dialogues of the past and present, Breathless is a rendezvous point for various art forms. Its beauty lies in intertwining mediums like literature, music, and painting into one frame. Godard's film, to me, is like a rebellious piece of software code that changes the entire program. Breathless rewrote rules with unparalleled swagger. It's as inspiring as it is infuriating, which is what makes it so enduring. That's beautifully put. You all highlight the rich layers Godard weaved into Breathless. As we sift through these during our discussion, I'm looking forward to unraveling even more of its intricacies. Shall we proceed? Welcome everyone. Let's begin our discussion by diving into the French New Wave's established cinematic techniques and how Breathless fits within that context. Amelia, your knowledge of various cultural movements would be a great starting point for us here. Certainly, Hal. The French New Wave was essentially a rebellion. Filmmakers like Godard were less interested in polished production and more in capturing the rawness of life. Breathless exemplifies this through its use of on-location shooting and natural light, which was radically different from the meticulous sets of mainstream cinema. True, Amelia. It's this rejection of formalism that sets Godard apart. His work, especially in Breathless, contrasted sharply against the rising action and narrative closure that the Hollywood style so religiously clung to. Lenny, that makes me wonder about the broader impact beyond just the contrast it set. And you know how this movement wasn't just a filmmaking technique, it was a philosophical stance, mirroring the existentialist conversations happening at the time. Absolutely, Amelia. And it's important to remember those films were made in the shadow of two world wars. The new wave directors used cinema as a way to process and reflect the uncertainties of their time. Indeed. They depicted a world that was unsteady, where traditional narrative structures fell short of capturing the complexities of real life. Right, but while the existentialist dread of the time fueled their storytelling, let's not romanticize it too much. The improvised dialogue, the jump cuts, they were also partly due to budget constraints and Godard's relative inexperience. He may have been inexperienced, but what he did with what little he had was pretty incredible. 
Nowadays, with all our advanced technology, we're still chasing the kind of authenticity that Godard's raw techniques achieved. Jazz, that's a compelling perspective on his innovation. The fact that modern filmmakers still draw inspiration from the French New Wave's techniques speaks volumes. Absolutely, jazz. Godard's approach went on to influence the entire visual language of cinema, encouraging filmmakers to break the rules and redefine what film could be. And as much as jazz is highlighting the positive, I have to add that Godard's methods sometimes led to incoherent narratives, a point modern filmmakers would do well to note among their inspirations. Incoherence for the sake of authenticity, some might argue, Lenny, it's all about the essence of the moment, which Godard captured so beautifully. Well said, Amelia, and I think that's a fitting end to our opening discussion. Godard's methods were revolutionary and have left a lasting imprint on cinema. Now let's turn to the specific editing style of Breathless, particularly the use of jump cuts that became one of its most iconic features. Lenny, perhaps you'd like to start this segment? Before we delve deep into the technique that quite literally cut through the norms, let's consider the ways in which Godard's editing choices have challenged the cinematic status quo. Lenny, I believe you have some strong thoughts on this? Absolutely, Hal. Godard's use of jump cuts in Breathless is a textbook example of rule-breaking in art. Traditional continuity editing aimed to encourage audience immersion to make them forget they're watching a film. Godard shattered that illusion, demanding the viewer to acknowledge the artifice. It was revolutionary. I admire the vigor with which Godard disrupted the norm, but let's not ignore that at times it's jarring to the narrative. It can throw you off as a viewer, provoke a certain discomfort that, while intentional, can also detract from the story. Jarring it may be, but think about the resulting dynamism, Izzy. It forces engagement. In today's era of rapid-fire information and multifaceted media, such techniques foreshadowed our current visual landscape. In fact, this kind of editing has been embraced, even evolved, with digital technologies. True. Jazz. But that doesn't make it universally appreciated or effective. The technique had its place, reflecting a moment in time when filmmakers were keen to upset the apple cart. However, some argue it feels more like a gimmick now, possibly due to overuse and emulation. I do believe that while, while certain aspects of the technique may not be universally embraced, Godard's spirit of innovation in Breathless carries its own aesthetic merit. It spoke, to its time and to us now, of boldness, a certain disregard for regimented form that can stifle creativity. Well, you can't debate the impact it had. Hollywood eventually absorbed and repackaged these radical methods, stripping them of the original context and intention. Yet the essence of that rebellion still resonates for filmmakers today. I'd like to add, perhaps it is not just the technique, but what it symbolizes that matters. The jump cut is emblematic of a modernist approach to storytelling, fragmented, non-linear, much like our understanding of time and memory now. In considering these points, we can't overlook the liberation of narrative that accompanied the jump cuts. Godard wasn't just editing a film, he was editing cinema's relationship with the viewer. Emergent realities through discontinuity, both refreshing and unnerving. Welcome back. With Patricia's character Breathless introduces a modern take on the femme fatale, reshaping the archetype in a new light. Izzy, what is your read on this portrayal? Patricia is fascinating. On one hand, she does embody elements of the classic femme fatale, using her allure and independence to navigate the world defined by men. But she's also unconfined by the one-dimensional trope of the past. She's intelligent, complex. Godard doesn't reduce her to simply being manipulative or dangerous. I'll jump in here, Izzy. I agree. She is more than the archetypal femme fatale. However, historically speaking, even traditional femme fatales have layers. Think of Phyllis Dietrichson in Double Indemnity. She's not just a seductress. She embodies post-war anxiety and changing gender roles. Patricia is an evolution, a sort of 1960s new wave femme fatale, if you will. Mick, that's a brilliant observation on the historical continuity. 
What I find most intriguing about Patricia is that she harks back to literary femme fatales while simultaneously breaking the mold, Godard's nod to literary traditions while asserting a progressive stance. Let's not romanticize it too much. I think Godard was still a prisoner of his time. It's compelling to ascribe all these progressive notions to Patricia, but she's still largely defined by her relationship to Michelle. And he, frankly, can be rather dismissive toward her, emblematic of real-world gender dynamics. Lenny, that's true, but it's also reflective of the era's real tension in gender dynamics. Patricia's ambiguity in loyalty and morality, that's powerful. She doesn't fit neatly into a predefined societal box, which is more subversive than we give credit for. Plus, she captures the spirit of the French New Wave's free-willed and complex women. Despite flaws, there was a forward-thinking portrayal of women there. While complexity of character certainly provides fertile ground for exploring contemporary issues, does the embodiment of such a character affect the storytelling? It does, Hal. You're sparking an interesting perspective here. Patricia is not just a character. She serves as a vehicle for exploring existential dilemmas, the randomness of life, choices. Her unpredictability adds layers to the narrative, mirroring the jump cuts we see visually, disjointed, unexpected. And it's that unpredictability that makes the audience invest in her. Is she gonna help Michelle or turn him in? That tension plays a huge role in the storytelling. At the same time, it could be argued that her apparent whims highlight a certain aimlessness rather than depth or complexity. It's not all subversion. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Except when it's not, Lenny. A woman exercising agency, especially during the 1960s, was a significant statement, however aimless it might appear. Exactly, Amelia. We can see Patricia as an agent of her own destiny, which was less common in those days. It was innovative for Godard to add such texture to her character. Well, this character, like the film itself, is multidimensional and forever open to interpretation. Our understanding of Patricia and her role in the story reflects an intersection of film, history, culture, and gender dynamics that continues to evolve. The existential theme in Breathless is undeniably central to the narrative. It reflects a post-war society grappling with newfound freedom and a sense of disillusionment. Michelle's character is emblematic of this existential crisis. Absolutely, Hal. Taking cues from Sartre and Camus, Michelle is a man lost in the world, a drifter seeking authenticity in an inauthentic society. The choices he makes are absurd, yet they define his reality. But let's not romanticize Michelle too much here. Godard is critiquing that existential ideal, Michelle's so-called authenticity is a mimicry of the tough American gangster, nothing but a performance. I think Godard acknowledges the allure of that performance, Lenny. Even so, there's tragic beauty in Michelle's attempt to assert his existence despite its ultimate futility. And it's that futility that really punches through. I don't know, his anti-hero status sort of wavers for me. Yes, he rejects societal norms, but aren't his choices just another kind of conformism? He's as trapped as anyone else. That's an intriguing point. In trying to break free, he conforms to another stereotype, just as you say, Izzy. Godard seems to be suggesting we're all playing roles to some extent. Roles that he perpetuates, might I add. His relationship with Patricia only accentuates his failures. He thinks he's taking charge, but he's as confused as anyone about what he really wants. Tragic hero or not, we can't ignore that Godard is using Michelle to challenge our perceptions. We're asked to question what we value in life, what makes life worth living, and the nature of our personal myths. The era in which Godard crafted this film was itself in rebellion, was it not? It's in these uncertain times that people look to characters like Michelle despite, or perhaps because of, his obvious flaws. I'd agree, Mick. It's Michelle's humanness that perhaps resonates most. We're all fallible, searching for meaning. The anti-hero reflects society's own existential angst. But let's not forget, Hal, that the anti-hero narrative Godard presents isn't just philosophical. It's also deeply cinematic. This character type was as much a rebellion against film tropes as it was anything else. That's a good observation, Jazz. Godard doesn't just construct an anti-hero, he deconstructs the trope in cinema, layering it with existential philosophy. 
I wonder if audiences then were ready for such a multifaceted challenge. Even if they weren't ready, it speaks to the film's enduring influence. These are questions that great art always revisits, and Breathless will continue to inspire discussions like ours for decades to come, no doubt. And with that, I think we've dissected the essence of existentialism and the anti-hero in Breathless quite thoroughly. Quite heated, but immensely insightful, everyone. Thank you. Let's move on. As we delve into Breathless, we see a clear imprint of American culture and film noir. Mick, could you kick us off with how Godard played with these elements? Absolutely, Hal. What's striking in Breathless is the stark embodiment of film noir staples, the cynical hero, the gritty urban setting, and of course, the femme fatale. Godard is paying homage while also tearing down the conventions. I'd say he's not just paying tribute, he's redefining them. Look at Michelle's infatuation with Humphrey Bogart. It's a mix of aspiration and pastiche. The influence is evident, but twisted to fit a new cultural context. Jazz, you've brought up a good point about Americanization. It's fascinating how Michelle's character becomes a conduit to explore the American dream through a distinctly French lens in post-war Europe nonetheless. True, Amelia, but let's not overlook how this film strips down those noir elements to their bare bones almost ridiculing them. I sense a contradiction in embracing and simultaneously mocking the genre. On one hand, Godard needed these themes. On the other, his style of storytelling transforms them into something entirely new. Cynical, yes, but also vibrant and bold. Izzy, speaking of new, the dialogue in Breathless also deserves a nod. It's a sharp, seemingly erratic back and forth that encapsulates that era's jazzy rhetoric, all while engaging with American culture. Quite the point, Mick. And this dialogue, it really dances around the idea of authenticity, doesn't it? An American talking through French characters, or is it the other way around? It's the interplay of glorification and critique of the American culture that, to me, raises the bar. Godard is not shy about showing admiration and disdain concurrently. That's part of the genius. And in this complexity, we find a rich field to explore his views on America and its cinematic exports, which have itself imprinted on the French New Wave. Is that dichotomy part of the appeal? Absolutely, Hal. The very conflict between admiration and disillusionment with America creates a dynamic tension in Breathless that's both attractive and thought-provoking. It brings to light how intertwined French and American cultures were at the time, simultaneously critiquing and idolizing each other, which is, in essence, a cultural conversation still relevant today. Isolates that 1960s spirit of rebellion. What he represents goes beyond mere delinquency. It's a cultural shift. It's fascinating to reflect on how this persona was received in the post-war context. Indeed, how? If we consider the literary predecessors like Selinger's Holden Caulfield, we see a pattern of youthful defiance. But Michel adds a French touch, a certain je ne sais quoi to the archetype of the rebel. Let's not forget, Amelia, that this figure of rebellion can be traced back even further to the Romantics. They were the original champions of individualism, which Michel so perfectly personifies. I'd like to jump in here, because it's not just the past informing this character, it's also about the era's zeitgeist. The 1960s were rife with revolutionary ideas, civil unrest, and a desire to break free from conservative restrictions. Jazz, you're spot on. Michelle's entire demeanor is practically an homage to the desire for change. His rejection of societal norms mirrors the larger movements emerging at that time. While we're romanticizing this iconoclast, let's not grow too fond of him. Michelle is also emblematic of the flawed aspects of revolt, selfishness, a disregard for others. Though he resonates with the era, his actions aren't without criticism. Lenny makes a good point. In romanticizing rebellion, we must be careful not to glorify the anti-hero's more destructive tendencies. Amelia, that's an important distinction. We remember these characters for their boldness, but we cannot ignore the chaos they leave in their wake. True, Izzy. The idea of revolt carries the allure of transformation, yet the actual consequence often leads to both personal and societal costs. Still, you can't deny the allure of breaking taboos 
of being on the cusp of cultural change. That's what draws us to Michel. His character was timely, but it transcends the era, echoing in the countercultural movements around the world. Exactly, Jazz. He's not just a rebel, but a symbol, serving as a beacon for tremendous change across various domains, music, politics, you name it. Symbols, however, can be double-edged swords. Let's not ignore the inherent romanticizing of what is essentially a petty criminal. It's that danger which makes him thrilling, but it's also a sobering dose of reality on glorified rebellion. Well, it seems we can agree that Michel both embodies and transcends the spirit of the 1960s, symbolizing an era while retaining a timeless appeal in the exploration of rebellion. Love and romance in Breathless sit at a peculiar intersection of charm and cynicism. However, the gender dynamics now appear. How shall I put this dated, perhaps? Izzy, your thoughts? Dated is putting it mildly, Hal. The romance in Breathless reflects a power imbalance blatant by today's standards. Patricia's autonomy feels undercut by Michelle's aggressive advances, which can be quite unsettling to a modern audience. Well, as much as I adore Godard's artistry, Izzy makes an essential point. There's an inherent romanticism in the film that's rife with ambivalence. To me, the relationship underscores a push-pull dynamic emblematic of the era's gender perceptions. Absolutely, Amelia. And it's worth noting, Patricia isn't a mere object. She wields considerable influence over Michelle. Her decision-making process is critical to the film's resolution. While we discuss progressiveness, or the lack thereof, it's pivotal to understand the historical context. The 60s were hardly the pinnacle of gender equality. Godard portrayed what he saw around him, no? True, Mick. The 60s weren't perfect. But acknowledging context doesn't mean we absolve outdated portrayals. What gets depicted on screen informs societal norms. Godard had a choice, an opportunity for commentary, not just mimicry. I think we're glossing over the style in which Godard chose to present the romance. There's an underlying critique in how Michel and Patricia interact. He didn't glorify their dysfunction. He placed it under a microscope. Jazz, I appreciate your point, but must gently push back. The film certainly puts the dynamics under a microscope, yet it romanticizes Michel's hubris and Patricia's hesitance in a way that complicates a modern perspective. This reminds me of the broader conversation of romance in the movies of that age. Was Godard's depiction of the romance markedly different from other narratives around that time? Actually, Hal, if anything, Breathless was a precursor to the type of ambiguous, complex relationships that later cinema would explore. It may not have been the norm then, but its ripple effects are unmistakable. Ironically, despite the critique, Breathless helped to cement certain romantic tropes in cinema. No? Jazz, to your point, yes, it did. Yet there's a raw authenticity to the film's portrayal of romance. It's unpolished, it's gritty, it's real. It doesn't cater to idealistic expectations, and that is one of the reasons it resonates to this day. It's raw, Mick, but let's not conflate real with ideal. It's a representation, a single narrative shaped by Godard's vision. Artifice and authenticity are in constant play here. And looking at this film through the modern lens, it can feel like holding up a mirror to the past reflecting how far we've come, and somewhat depressingly, how certain patterns repeat themselves. Izzy, would you say then that this film holds value as an educational piece on the evolution of gender dynamics? Without a doubt, Hal. Breathless can be a remarkable gauge for measuring progress, or the lack thereof, in cinematic romance and beyond. Yet, whilst we study and critique, let us not forget that at the heart of this film lies a story that still captivates, the tension and dynamics have driven discussions for decades, and rightfully so. I think part of what makes Breathless so enchanting is the intertwining of authenticity and artifice. The characters are at once real and yet so stylized. Precisely, Hal, but let's not romanticize it excessively. Godard was commentating on the inauthenticity of the cinematic medium itself playing with the audience's suspension of disbelief. It's like the scene where Michelle talks to Patricia while looking in the mirror. Godard is holding up a mirror to cinema, showing us the illusions, but reveling in them. And isn't that more relevant now than ever? 
With virtual reality and deepfakes, the line between real and fake is perpetually blurred. To your point, jazz, Breathless was way ahead of its time. Patricia and Michelle, they're awash in a sea of artifice, reflective of our current obsession with image and perception. Interesting, Izzy. It reminds me, the streets of Paris serve as both a backdrop and a character in the film. Godard captures a Paris that's gritty and authentic, yet also a stylized set piece. But Mick, don't you think that gritty authenticity is often a contrivance in itself? The so-called real Paris is as much a construct as any Hollywood backlot. Lenny has a point. However, Godard still invites us to seek truth in his characters. He showcases their flaws, their indecision, and that, to me, feels profoundly authentic. Ironically, by displaying such raw character flaws through a lens of artifice, Godard was pioneering. It's a dual commentary on the characters' lives and the medium itself. So it seems we're all in agreement that Godard's Breathless crafts an intricate dance between reality and illusion, one that continues to resonate with the medium today. Absolutely, Hal. The genius lies in the balance, the deceptive simplicity on the surface, yet beneath it, a complex exploration of what it means to be truly authentic. Well put, Izzy. It asks us whether any representation can be fully authentic, or if art by its very nature must embrace artifice to find a deeper truth. Nonetheless, let's not sidestep the potential pitfalls. Overindulgence in artifice can lead to a style over substance trap, which some might argue Godard narrowly avoids. Even if that were the case, Lenny, isn't that the crux of art? to flirt with that boundary between substance and style? Indeed, Amelia. And with that, we've painted a quite vivid picture of the authenticity-artifice dichotomy in Breathless. Shall we delve into the film's commentary on media and fame next? Let's delve into the film's relationship with media and its commentary on fame. Mick, could you start us off with your historical insight on this? Certainly, Hal. Breathless enters at a time when media was metamorphosing, especially in France. There's a sense of immediacy in the film that mirrors the burgeoning phenomenon of tabloids and the cult of celebrity. This preoccupation with image and public persona is omnipresent throughout the film. Yes, Mick, and I think it's fascinating how Godard seems to presage our current culture's obsession with fame. Patricia's mingling with the journalists, the interviews, it's very much a precursor to our social media dynamics. That's an excellent point, Izzy. From a tech perspective, Godard was instinctually interactive. Before we had the means to craft our image with filters and followers, his characters were already curating their personas for the public eye. I have to say though, while Godard does address these themes, I find some of it a bit on the nose. It lacks the subtlety that say a Hitchcock might have employed. What's your take, Amelia? On the contrary, Lenny, what you see as a lack of subtlety, I consider a deliberate choice. It actually highlights the artificiality of the personal image and the way individuals play roles in real life, just as they would on stage. Godard doesn't shy away from exposing this performance. The performative aspect is indeed compelling. The way Michel models himself after Humphrey Bogart is telling, isn't it? It's a blend of adulation and identity construction. Sure, but isn't there also something more cynical at play here? Michelle embodies a superficial mimicry of fame without substance, and it's ultimately hollow. Absolutely, Mick. And let's not gloss over the gender aspect. Patricia's pursuit of a writing career, her struggle for a voice within the male-dominated media world, speaks volumes. Gender dynamics notwithstanding, her character represents the shift in media consumers becoming creators themselves. It's another example of Godard's foresight into today's content generation landscape. I agree with the foresight, but maintain the execution can be clumsy by Godard. Self-creation isn't a new concept birthed by media though. It's been around since Narcissus saw his reflection. Lenny, while literary precedents exist, Breathless engages with this in the context of its time, making it a modern exploration of self versus facade. I imagine the film does compel us to consider where authenticity ends and artifice begins, not just in the media, but within ourselves as well. The line can be distressingly thin. Precisely. It's an endless dance between reality and the illusion we choose or feel compelled to sell to the world. But even in selling the illusion, there's a truth to the characters. 
Godard forces us to recognize the complexity of image and identity. And if we extend that thought in an age of increasing VR and AR, might we all become Michelle or Patricia, curators of our avatars? It's a valid point, Jazz, but perhaps that digital transition further blurs the dichotomy of real and fake Godard played with. That's the beauty of Breathless, though, isn't it? It continues to prompt these discussions years after its premiere. Indeed, it does. The film remains a compelling chapter in our ongoing narrative about the human condition. Let's ponder the ripples Breathless has left in contemporary cinema and popular culture. Perhaps Jazz, you'd like to start us off with your thoughts on the technical or narrative legacy. Certainly, Hal. Breathless, with its raw energy and innovative techniques, has bequeathed a certain freedom to modern filmmakers. The fragmented narratives that we see in films by directors like Tarantino have their roots in Godard's disjointed storytelling. I agree with Jazz, but I'd like to add that the pervasive references to pop culture within Breathless opened a sort of intertextual conversation that we're still having in film and television today. It's fascinating, isn't it? This constant dialogue between past and present, for instance, the casual charisma that Michelle exudes has become a trope for many flawed anti-heroes in contemporary cinema. I must interject. While the charm is notable, we shouldn't gloss over the fact that some of these legacies are double-edged. Godard's stylistic pastiche has led to an era where style can trump substance. Well, Lenny, while that's a fair consideration, I think it also set the precedent for films that challenge the observer's perspective, influencing our understanding of film as an art form. Let's not forget the cultural impact too. Breathless has been continually referenced, parodied, and honored across various media, seeping into the fabric of popular culture, in music videos, commercials, and more. But at what cost, Izzy? Has this not also fed into an endless cycle of remakes and rehashing? To me, it feels as if we're constantly looking back rather than forging new pathways. Even so, Lenny, homage can be a form of innovation. Filmmakers confront Godard's influence, wrestle with it, and often emerge with something new and transformative. And the element of breathless that can't be replicated is its timing. It captured the spirit of a particular moment, and that is something eternal, something we can't simply dismiss as just influence. Indeed, the zeitgeist moment of Breathless is inimitable. Its legacy is paradoxical, simultaneously a symbol of its time and a timeless conversation with the ever-changing dynamics of cinema. As we near the end of our discussion, I'd like each of you to crystallize your thoughts. The legacy of Breathless is undeniably rich, but what, specifically, does it continue to teach us about cinema and culture at large? If I may start, Breathless to me is a beautiful symphony of rebellion and romance that defies time. Godard, through this film, etches a lesson on creative freedom, urging filmmakers to transcend conventional storytelling, which indeed is invaluable. Amelia, while I agree with your sentiment on its thematic richness, I must say the film's message has evolved. What it teaches us today is vastly different. It's a document of the times, a relic. We've learned those lessons. Now, it's more a reference point than a manual. True, Lenny. But relics are historical touchstones that shape our discourse. Breathless sparks ongoing debates about the romanticization of anti-heroes and the ethics of narrative disruption, which are as pertinent today as they ever were. Respectfully, Izzy, I think Breathless teaches us even more about adaptability. It's a herald of transformation, mirroring how technologies transform art. Approaching cinema with the principle of change, not just in technique, but in perspective. That's Godard's enduring lesson. Let's consider, though, without over-romanticizing, the implications of its cultural transmissions. Breathless has fostered an intellectual curiosity about other cultures, telling us that imitation can be flattery, but also a means of forging identity. These are all profound observations. Still, we must probe whether or not the influence of Breathless has been an unequivocally positive force. Does it enhance or muddle our understanding of the art form? I'll jump on that grenade, Hal. Its influence is a double-edged sword. It beckons experimentation, but sometimes it justifies incoherence under the guise of art. We must be critical, 
or we risk celebrating form over substance. I must interject there, Lenny. The substance of Breathless is its form. They're inseparable. And that's precisely why it remains a cornerstone of film education and criticism. And to build on Amelia's point, it continues to demonstrate that the real magic of cinema lies within its ability to reinvent itself through such bold forms influencing every era anew. Let's not underestimate the socio-cultural critique embedded in the film, influencing the narrative content of contemporary cinema. Its legacy is evident in modern storytelling. As expected, our views diverge yet converge in unexpected ways, mirroring the very essence of the film in discussion. We recognize the indelible mark Breathless has left, whether as an inspiration or a cautionary tale. This is the nature of significant works. They resonate, they disrupt, and they provoke thought long after their initial debut. It's been an illuminating dialogue, and I thank each one of you for your insightful contributions.